hi welcome back to my channel i'm just making a sort of really informal video while i'm making the next part of this video which you will see after this short clip so today is the general election general general i sound like i'm from australia general election in the united kingdom so we're voting for parties in westminster on our local government and i thought i'd make a video of why it is so important especially as a woman why it isn't so so important that you vote and you vote responsibly and you vote informed. So as you may have seen, I was looking at a photograph at the start of this video. So this is my great grandmother. She was an Irish speaking suffragist in County Cork 100 years ago. Her name, now I, I don't speak Irish, so my pronunciation is probably not that good. Is either Rachel or Rochelle. Her name as in the Irish version of Rachel Bell Moran. And I don't know if you can see her. I've got other photographs of her, but I haven't been able to find them. But I am um, named after her, and apparently I look very like her. And she is a real inspiration for me. I never knew her. She died quite a long time before I was born, because she was quite old by the standards today when she had my grandfather. She's like in her 30s when she had my grandfather. Um, but she campaigned for the woman's right to vote in what it would have been Ireland as a whole, as in the British sort of ruled Ireland. And um, she was a very adherent a uh, advocate of women's right to vote, no matter if you're working middle or upper class, because she was a working class seamstress and artist. So she thought that everybody should vote. So in my family alone, I know that's very important to vote because she campaigned for my right to vote. And also this year, a really good book, 10 Inspiration Irish Women. There's a really famous Irish suffragist Hannah she Scaffington or Johanna she was born as or Johanna and I'm just trying to find her this is her here and her husband was actually accidentally killed during the 1916 rising but she's been a real inspiration for me because not only did she get a BA but a master's 1902 which is nearly unheard of in women especially Irish women so she was uh, an Irish suffragist and definitely believed in the right to vote and she also believed in the United Ireland so for me, uh, these two women and loads of other Irish women and also the Pankhursts are very, very important for me because every time I'm going to vote, I think, well, what these women did to be able to vote, to be able to, for us to vote today. So we shouldn't take for granted, especially as a woman, that you can that you can vote because up until 1918, you couldn't vote and actually a lot of men couldn't vote because of different property requirements but in 1918 the, the representation of the people's act meant that women over 30 who had their own property or themselves or their husbands were in the local government or in a, in a university um i can't remember the name in a university area that they could vote and it wasn't until 1928 that women over 21 could have the same right votes as men over the age of 21. So for me, it's very, very important to vote. Make sure you go onto your selected party or party's websites to find out what they uh, are um, campaigning for, either for health, education, the environment, animals, uh, women's rights, refugee rights, stuff that really influenced you. Now here in Northern Ireland, we don't really have, like we have a Labour and Conservative Party, but not so much as we have our own party. So we have the DUP, which I like to call the Dinosaur Unionist Party because they're so backward. UUP, the Union Ulster Party, Sinn Féin, you heard of them, and the Social Democratic Labour Party, which is the more the moderate Nationalist Party. Then we have the Alliances with the Centre, the Green Party, obviously Environment. For myself, I will be voting for the Social Democratic Labour Party because I am an Irish Nationalist. I believe in the reunification of Ireland, but through peaceful means only, of course. So I will be voting for them because they also support equal marriage, quite staunch. Um, support for um, a legalizing abortion here in certain circumstances, legalizing equal marriage for education and the environment, and also they, they do quite a lot of stuff for animals, so it's good for me. So it is so so important for you to vote. So please vote informed and vote responsibly and go out today and vote, vote, vote. Please vote change and please don't vote Theresa May because I don't like her. Um, and I'm also going to do the second part of this video where I'm going to be making a suffragette belt with ribbons in the in what would have been the English suffragettes colours, which is obviously purple, white and green. So you'll see here, the purple, white and green. I didn't, wouldn't make a sash of votes for them because I'm going to be a bit much, but I think I wore the 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 colours. I'm going to make that with three thin bits of ribbon and I'm going to use it on my amazing 1940s electrified sewing machine. So let's get crafting. Woohoo! 
So I was going to make the suffragettes a uh, sash or belt on my um, old vintage sewing machine which you can see here but unfortunately it actually needs oiled and I have no sewing machine oil so I'm going to hand stitch it which means it'll take longer but it will be made with love. Not that it won't be made with love with my machine but it'll just take a bit longer. So I'm just going to show you what I have done so far. So you will need for your suffragette sash you will need a ribbon in purple in white and in this emerald green color as you can see it's similar to this and you will need a purple thread a white thread and a green thread so um i had started to tack it with tacking means just loosely sewing stuff together with a thread that i could see so i would have been able to sewing on my machine but it's not working but it's actually quite helpful because i can tack it with this sort of loose crappy thread and start sewing it with a bit of the white thread here and then do some purple decoration as well at the top oh so i'm going to start doing this all the way along and then for the green one and then i'm going to finish it off by doing a very small hand stitch with white and white again for purple and green but so that the the stitch will be on the purple on the reverse side so you can't see it on the green or purple and then i'll do some accent stitches probably maybe a loop stitch or maybe a leaf stitch on this and um to get the measurements for the sash slash um belt you need to measure your waist plus add on about 14 inches so mine was 27 inches and i added on another 13 inches which was about 100 centimeters of ribbon and your waist might, and you might need more you might need less you might want to make a, like a suffrage jet rosette but that's how i got it and i got this in my little local fabric shop and wool shop i really try not to spend a fortune in there because i that's one of my other things i'm hoping to make more videos on is crafting and sewing i'm dressmaking and as you can see i'm just sort of trying it out here and then i will take a little twirl around so you can see what it looks like so i've got about a quarter of the way down my ribbon there's a bit here and i've just tacked very very quickly onto the purple ribbon and now i'm going to sew it with this a thread here and then I'm going to leave a bit at the end so I can tie it at the bottom of my jeans and have a little bit of a frilly, like a frilly bit at the at the sides so they can see the colours and a lot of people might know what the colours mean. And then I'm going to tack again the green to the white and sew the green properly and the purple properly. So now I've um, sewn about nearly three quarters of it and I'm just about to untake the tacking stitches. So I'm going to use one of these which is what focuses come on focus okay it's a stitch ripper be very careful it's very sharp to keep out of the way of small children and animals and i'm just basically going to unpick all of these and get rid of the horrible black thread So I have finished sewing all of the purple and white together and there's just a little bit loose at the end so that it'll sort of frill out when I wear it with my dress on Thursday or today because it is Thursday but I'm filming on Tuesday. So as you can see this is buckled a little bit but I've done a running stitch which is similar to a smaller stitch on the machine but if you pull where you have the end of the thread along here you can flatten it out. Woohoo! So there we have my finished suffragette belt. Oh, it's quite long. And this is the tail end. A bit like a rosette, and I'll show you what it looks like on in just in a second. So this is my finished belt that I'm going to wear with a purple dress or a black dress. I haven't quite decided, but I think that's quite successful. It looks really good, it's a suffragette colors, and I'm happy with that. It looks really good.